Hello, welcome back. This is part 4 of the series on the M5 forecasting competition. In this video, we're going to try some other naive forecasting methods, compare performances using the custom evaluation metrics we wrote last video, and make a submission directly from a Kaggle kernel. Let's get started. In the last video, we went all the way from reading in the data to evaluating our forecast with the example of predicting all zeros. The WRM SSC computed at the end obviously wasn't ideal because from the current score on the leaderboard, 5 point something isn't going to give us a good ranking. So I'll have to go back to step 2 where we fill the forecast columns for the local test set, experiment with a different method, and evaluate. Once we find one that performs reasonably well, we'll make predictions on the actual test set specified by the competition using this method and submit our predictions. Here are a couple of other naive forecasting methods based on intuition. We know that the sales of the next 28 days is probably not going to be drastically different from historical mean, so we could just assign historical averages to all days we forecast for. We also know that recent history might affect the future more than the ones further back, so we could experiment with tuning the number of days where we take the averages from. So instead of taking averages through all of history, maybe we just want to take average sales of x days before the start of forecasting day. x could be 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. The downfall of using the mean value is that we can't capture any day-to-day -day fluctuations. So another way of referring to recent history is just to copy values from the last 28 days and use those values for each of the respective forecast dates. We might even be able to capture some fluctuation patterns across the weekdays because each daily sales value we take from recent history is going to come from the same weekday as our prediction day. For example, we take values from day 1858 as forecast for day 1886 in our local test. And they're both Mondays. Going off of this idea that there might be seasonal patterns, for any forecast day, we can also try taking the average historical sales of the same day in previous years. To evaluate performance of each, let's first code these forecasts. To get historical mean, we want to get columns that starts with the underscore for day number less than or equal to 1885, which is the last day before our local forecast days. We also want to take the ID column, use that as index, and take transpose. After this, we'll get a data frame where each column name stores all historical daily unit cells for a level 12 series. At this point, we can use the dot mean function, reset index, and store the resulting data frame in a variable called complete historical mean df which is going to look like this. Column 0 stores the means of respective series. I call this the complete historical mean df because a lot of the series starts with leading zeros. This is because not all products are on shelf from the very beginning. So to take this method one step further, we'll only count values as significant once the first non-zero value pops up. For example, if a product sells one unit on day 300 and nothing before, will only take average from days after day 300, and this time regardless of whether their values are zero or not. Let's first check that nothing is always zero. Take the sum of all sales unit columns and the minimum is 10, so everything has at least some sales. Then define a function that accepts an array and returns index of the first non-zero value. This function is going to return zero if it didn't find any non-zero values, but from what we just checked, this isn't going to be a problem store all the sales value columns in df as a numpy matrix called hysarray. Then for each row in this matrix, we're going to use the function we just defined to find the first non-zero entry. Store that in an array called non-zero star array. We'll take the first row in df to see if this worked. We use id from the first row. The first non-zero value occurs on day 901. Before that point, every sale sums up to 0, and after that point, sales sum up to 600. Then in order to take average of what we call significant sales values, we want to first count how many days are significant for each of these rows, which is basically just the total number of days, 1885, minus the index of the first significant day. So if a row is significant starting from day 1, index of the first non-zero would be 0, and the count would be 1885. Store respective counts in an array and divide sum of each row by only the count of significant values. This will be our mean taken only after the first non-zero entry. We'll still store the forecast in the same format as last time, but with an identifier for each method because we'll be using multiple methods in the end. 
To use the average from all history, we will assign the forecast for each of the 28 days to the same value in column 0 and complete historical mean df. Identify this method by capital F underscore 1. Similarly, each of the 28 days with average after first non-zero entry is going to be assigned the same value in non-zero historical mean array and will be identified by F underscore 2. Then we'll just create a dictionary to store method ID to what it actually means. On to the next method. Instead of taking the mean from all of history, maybe we care about recency and just want to take average across the latest couple days, leading up to the first forecast day. The series with the minimum number of non-zero is apparently 40, so if we don't take averages of more than 40 days, we won't have to worry about the leading zeros. Create data frames that take averages in different time ranges. Each range ends right before the first prediction day and goes back 10, 20, 30, and 40 days respectively. These forecasts are going to be identified by F underscore 3, 4, 5, and 6. Update our method dictionary. In the next method, we're just going to use the same values as the previous 28 days. This is easy to implement. For each of the forecast day, we just want to set its value to the sales number 28 days ago. This method will be indexed by F underscore 7. Now on to the last method, which for any forecast day takes averages of the same day in historical years. The idea is that time of year might have impact on how this product sells in the store. We're going to use 364 as length for each year, because subtracting by 364 is going to land us on day last year in the same weekday. For example, for day 1886, which is a Monday, subtracting 364 days from it also gets us a Monday. We can at most get back 5 years from the historical data, so we'll start by adding up all the sales number going back 364, 2 times 364, 3 times, 4 times, and 5 times 364 days. Then divide only by the number of years where the sales number is significant. The floor of num non zero divided by 364 is going to tell us how many years are after the first non zero entry. And if this is zero, that means we don't have any historical non zero sales in previous years on this day. So we'll simply set the denominator to 1 in order to avoid a division by zero error. Then this equation is essentially going to give us zero. Unfortunately, based on the mechanism of this approach, that means all of our forecasts for the next 20 days are going to be zero. Now that we have stored forecasts for each method, we can continue to run the evaluation steps we wrote last time. Inferring higher level aggregation values is not going to be affected by our change to the forecast method. So just run it as is. But in step four, instead of finding the forecast columns just once, we want to create a dictionary to store forecast columns for different methods. It will have eight entries, one for each of the methods. We'll calculate RMSSE for both DF and HEGDF using the same method with slight modifications, one of which is to store the RMSSE for each method with a different identifier in the column name. Call it RMSSE underscore method ID. And the second is to use the method ID to find the respective forecast columns to pass into the RMSSE function. Same for the WRMSSC, which is store the method ID. At this point, we'll have all of our scores for all the naive forecast methods listed, and we'll print them out for our comparison. It looks like that taking the exact same values as the previous 20 days worked the best, and taking averages of x number of recent days doesn't seem to do a lot better as x increases. We can see the score kind of plateaued around 1.13. Based on the result, we want to make a submission to Kaggle with this method, which is method 7. Let's take a look at the sample submission file again. We're going to make forecasts for days 1914 to 1941 for IDs appended by underscore validation, and store forecasts in columns F1 to F28. We'll also make forecasts for days 1942 to 1969 for IDs appended by underscore evaluation, then store the forecasts in the same F columns. Just a quick check that the order of IDs in the sample submission is exactly the same as those in the training set. The idea of method 7 is that we take values from days 1886 to 1913 as the forecast for days 1914 to 1941. And since we don't have access to real values from 1914 to 1941 yet, 
which is used the same values for days 1942 to 1969. So the submit DF2 is just a copy of submit DF. And I've just changed the validation to evaluation. I haven't tested this out, but in theory, you should get the same score on the leaderboard at this stage, regardless of your predictions on the evaluation points. Because as mentioned in the guidelines PDF, scores on days 1942 to 1969 will never be released before the final results. Finally, append the valuation forecast to the validation forecast and write this data frame into submission.csv. To submit this file, first commit this version of the code. This might take a bit. When the commit process finishes, click Open Version. There's a tab called Output on the right sidebar. And we can submit output directly from here. I've submitted this version before as a test, and we can see using just values from the previous 28 days gave a score of 0.8377, which is quite similar to the 0.856 we calculated locally. I'm going to end this video and do some more experiment with other techniques. Let's all stay safe and see you next time.